there they come. Well, we're trying another studio vlog. Um, I figured that I would take you through the process of me making tiny little sculptures. Um, if you don't know, I have started teaching at CCA in the illustration program, which has been so much fun. One of the classes that I teach is materials. And one of the projects that we're gonna do this coming semester is um, making a character three different times um, using Sculpey. So I think Sculpey, so that's part of why I'm doing it now. A lot of um, the hard part about starting teaching these uh, college courses is that I actually have to test like a lot of the projects um, or try to. Um, and so I wanna do Sculpey my only hurdle is they're a little college students and I don't know if they have an oven. So um, we're going to do Sculpey so far. It might be something else. It was going to be wood before that, but that felt dangerous. So <laughs> Sculpey it is uh, for now. But so I'm going to repeat the character three different times, um, playing with proportions, playing with um, like how I'm painting it, like all of that. Um, and uh, I thought I would take you with me. So the character I chose is Death. Um, I've been doing a lot of, I mean, I have been using tarot for a long time, just intermittently and for fun and, and also just to prompt like uh, conversations with myself about how I'm feeling and where I'm at and all of those things. And I've been drawing um, a lot of cards, um, like actually drawing, not drawing, but <laughs> drawing uh, a lot of the cards um, and thinking about what if I design my own deck. So I thought that for the character that I would do, it would be fun to choose one from the deck and death is one of my favorite characters. So um, I'm going to draw death. I'm going to, so right now I'm sketching. We'll do some sketching together and then I'll show you some of the books that I use and card decks that I have and um, then we'll make some Sculpey figurines. And I don't know how much of this you'll get to see. Maybe I'll make it in two parts. Um, I work slowly and making art is a slow thing, but that's what we're going to start with. Welcome back to me, to you. So I thought I would share some of the resources that I use for um, tarot. So some of these are like I've had this for probably, I don't know, like four or five years. Um, when I do, whenever it came out, I got it. Um, Michelle T used to live in San Francisco. I'm a big fan. Um, so whenever I like just using tarot on my own, like when I pull a card, I'll, I'll read about it. And then, um, like this on death and, um, Michelle will give like all sorts of uh, personal anecdotes uh, to illustrate like the meaning um, behind the card and how to interpret it for yourself, which is a really great way to kind of um, start have like a starting point for self reflection, which I really enjoy about tarot. And then um, there's also like a bunch of activities included with each card, like things to do to help reflect on those. I don't use these as much, um, so much as um, Michelle T's writing um, as a starting point for me, um, but I love this book. I come back to it all the time. Another book is this book by Toshin on tarot. Um, let's see if I can find, I bookmarked it. So each card has its own little chapter. It has, um, like the different interpretations of death. Um, I wish there was more languages. This is very like Eurocentric, but that's fine. Um, and then the qualities of the card, the symbols of the card. Um, and then there's usually like a little writing on the symbology and the attributes. Um, and then just a bunch of different ways that it's been interpreted in tarot, which is so cool. Um, to see they really have like a super diverse like array of cards um let's see if I'm, yeah and then um yeah like Rachel Howe I have uh, her deck but so that's kind of what you can expect for each card within this book which I really enjoy um I love the breakdown of the symbolism and then this is a newer book for me um it's tarot and divination cards by Leticia Barbier I think is how you say their last name but I could be wrong um and let's see if I can get to our bookmark. Um, so what I like about this so far is that it 
incorporates a ton of writing. Like I really love reading um, the interpretations um, by the different people, like the different authors, um, a lot of writing. Um, and then also like non-tarot uh, interpretations of death. So how those symbols show up in other areas. I mean, there's definitely a lot of tarot, um, you know, showing us tarot, but there's also a lot of like non-tarot interpretations of those symbols, which is pretty cool. A little shorter, but also, you know, the one from Tashin, like each card was taking up a full page. So still a lot of... Um, resources here. But I, those are kind of the three that I'm looking at as I um, explore tarot, but then also as I consider um, doing this project um, slowly. I can't emphasize slowly enough <laughs> over time. Um, ta -da. And then as far as decks go, these are four of my favorites. Um, this is by Rachel Howe. This is the death card by Rachel Howe. Um, if you do not know Rachel how you can find her on Instagram at small spells she's incredible my two um, stick and poke tattoos are by her I love everything she does she's wonderful um, just like really really incredible artist um, and then I actually started following her when she was doing ceramics primarily so a long time ago um, and then this is by gentle thrills um, it comes in this cool box which is awesome um, and they're bigger I like the size of these um, really beautiful colorful playful I love the different borders um, but that's the death card and then this is my most used one it's the Rider Waite um, it's a classic if you're into tarot you know this deck um, it's like bending there's like some water damage it's fine and then this is a more recent one for me that I got um it's the mother piece tarot deck um I loved that it was round and it's by Karen Vogel and Vicky Noble um and <laughs> this version is like newer I just had to look at the box because I always mix up their names um but this is the death card which I love I love the illustrations in this it reminds me a little bit of the writer weight um but I like the way that there's like the way that the watercolor is being used it's really playful and beautiful and I like the format the round deck but I thought I'd show you the four that I look at the most um I have a couple of others but I don't think they're out here anyway that's what those are the things I'm looking at now let's draw some death <laughs> Above the clouds where there's no rooftop, no ceiling. Whoa, oh, oh. Into a place where the light can't come, eclipse the sun. This is heavenly. All I want, all I need is right here next to me. It can't get better than this. No, 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 no. It can't get better than this. No, no.
I decided that um, trusting college kids to uh, have access to an oven was, or just even requiring it, was not going to work well. Um, I want this to be relatively uh, foolproof um, and accessible. So I got two different options for air dry clay. I've never used either of these before. I'm going to do one um, in one clay and then the other in the other. and. A major thing for me is just figuring out how long it takes for it to dry because that's going to dictate um, how long they're going to need to be able to make it and the timing of the assignment. So I think I'm going to start with this one and then we'll do this one. So I think the main thing that I want to focus on, I want to make these relatively small. Um, I do have like a bunch of tools from um, my ceramic days. Um, that I might use. I have like stuff for textures and carving and all that stuff. So I have those. But I think the first thing I want to do is just do a tiny one and see how it feels. Um, I want these to be three dimensional. So um, I want them to have like, let's see. Like if I think about the death character that we did. I want it to be kind of in the round, you know, but it can still be like blocky. Hannah, <laughs> Hannah, who's my assistant and helps me out, is going to get a kick out of this. She uses ceramics and makes beautiful little figurines regularly. Um, I'll link, I'll link Hannah's work. Hannah's amazing. So this is like where the hood and the face will be. And then let's see if we can do, I'm a little worried about doing the scepter, it might just be painted on, but we can try. If we do it like this. We'll see if it falls apart. <laughs> that's that's basically this whole thing. We'll see. Like I think about, so when I think about artists who work like this, who like kind of both do illustration and painting and do sculpture, I think of people like Mark Etherington, Etherington, I might be saying his name incorrectly, incredible artist, one of my absolute all-time faves, um, does these, like, really cool, I don't know if he still does it, but, like, 
he has an incredible painting style, but um, he also will like build these like wooden kind of like carved frames for his work that are so weird. Um, Nicholas Stevenson is someone who I'm a big fan of, um, an illustrator in the UK who is also like just a, a really incredible artist um, and he will sometimes do like 3D type stuff as like a way of being playful. So, <laughs> so, so far this is what this looks like, but I'm kind of into it. I'm gonna set that to the side. We're gonna do another one and I'm gonna make it a little bit taller. So kind of the point of the assignment is to do the same character three different times in varying ways, right? So each time is different than the last time um, as a means of kind of like exploring how you convey the information of who that character is while still being playful. Um, I think I'm going to have it tie into another assignment that they'll be doing. So I, I'm kind of picturing it being a three part assignment, but I also don't want them to get bored with the assignment, but we'll see. I'm kind of into it the way that it is. So this one, this is where our little head will be. This clay is pretty cool. We'll see how it dries, but I'm pretty into this. Uh -uh. It's neat. It's like, um, I'm trying to, like, you can see how it's like pulling off in pieces, but it's really easy to, to work with. So let's make the head of this one like longer. everything will be a little bit stretched. I don't know why I was like, I was kind of like avoiding doing this, which is important for me to remember. It just feels hard um, to like switch your brain in a different mode, but I just finished a client project and this actually feels really nice. Um, it's Sunday. I'm leaving to go out of town for a few days on Wednesday to spend some time with my sister up at our cabin, our family cabin together. So that's going to be really fun. Just the two of us. I'm so excited. Um, but, you know, being my own boss means that I do, I do feel like a lot of pressure to get a lot of work done before then just so that I can actually relax and not be thinking about all of the stuff that I have to do. So sorry for all the background noise. I don't know what to tell you. It's my neighbors. They're having a good time. They're like building a house maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, let's see. This doesn't, this feels almost like too thin. So I'm going to add a little bit to it. Um, but so finish that client project. I'm shipping out three paintings, taking a painting to the framer, and um, this evening I'll send out two um, kind of fun client projects that I've done for friends um, more recently. And uh, Once I get all of that done, I'm gonna feel, I'm feeling like I'm in a good place. I went for a swim this morning. Trudy, are you trying to get out? Here. Okay, so someone, I put a little sticker on Instagram to ask like what type of stuff you're interested in seeing on YouTube from me. Um, just cause I, sometimes I'm like, is this interesting? <laughs> like. I don't know. Um, 
And someone recently asked, uh, or someone put in the, the question recently, as of today, um, what things that I'm, I'm into this summer. So how I'm doing this summer and um, new and old things that I'm, I'm excited about. Um, so uh, how I'm doing this summer is now that I don't have COVID, great. Um, no, I, I've been doing good. Um, I traveled a little bit. I went to Icon Conference, which was a lot of fun. I got to meet people who I've talked to for a long time on the internet, but um, you know, don't get to see in real life. Um, and I uh, also got to uh, do the um, education symposium in the beginning, which is great since I'm teaching at CCA again in the fall. Um, it was nice to hear from other people who teach illustration um, and different like uh, theorems that they're incorporating into their academic uh, like syllabus and stuff like that. Um, that's the hardest part for me in teaching is just like figuring out how to organize a syllabus. Um, so that's been great and then in that vein one of my favorite resources in thinking about that is this classic Linda Berry um, book called Syllabus um, and if you're not familiar with Linda Berry get familiar um, and if you're a teacher uh, specifically an art teacher can't recommend enough um, she also has one called Co Making Comics, I think, um, that's epic. Um, but I just love the way, you know, a lot of how she approaches teaching aligns with how I approach teaching. Um, so that's a favorite. I'm visiting this a lot. A lot of my evenings are being spent, uh, you know, looking over the syllabus I had for the spring semester and reformatting it for the fall semester, um, thinking about what projects um, worked really well and what ones could have been better. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that's something, an old oldie but a goodie that I'm really liking. Um, another thing that I'm really enjoying is this art book by, it's new, um, from Fiden. Um, uh, Jean Julien. I'm probably fucking it up. Sorry. Um, I always say Ju Jean Julien in my head, but that's can't be right. Um, but it's beautiful. I love art books. I love looking at art. Um, looking at art online is just hard. Uh, as I say, as I, um, am talking to you online, but, um, looking at art digitally for me just really, isn't helpful like um it's helpful sometimes for like a mood board or something like that i rarely do that um it is most helpful for me to have like physical um things to spend time with so i always encourage my students to like rent books from the library to like spend time with artists that they like outside of like instagram um one of the hardest projects that I made my students do uh, this last semester was a five minute presentation on an artist and they couldn't use Instagram. I, it was a nightmare. Um, <laughs> that's one of the things I'm reformatting is how to, uh, like kind of like show them how to, how to do that. Um, cause everyone just uses Instagram, myself included. Um, but I love it. It includes like a lot of his illustration work. It's like a big old retrospective on his work. I love his paintings, um, in particular. I like, you know, of course, just the way his brain works. This studio picture is great. Um, but that's another favorite. I'm so glad I got that. This is epic. This is, uh, Safer at Home Pandemic Paintings. I don't know if you can buy it still. I'm pretty sure it was like limited edition, but um, it's all of the paintings that Esther Pearl Watson made over the pandemic. Her paintings are incredible. I have one of her limited edition prints from a few years ago. Um, I just love her work. I love the way her brain works. I love the way she incorporates writing and text into her paintings. Um, I just love it. I love the way she's thinking about memory and storytelling and narrative um, and doing it all in one painting. It's just incredible. Um, so that's another favorite for me. And then I guess like outside of art, <laughs> what? Um, outside of art, favorite things for me, I'm trying to think. I just finished um, Stranger Things, which was great. I mean, how basic am I? Um, epic. Um, and I'm really digging re-listening to that um, soundtrack. Um, I know there's a lot of like hot opinions about the Kate Bush <laughs> running up the hill song. I love it, um, at least right now. Oh, this is another art book I'm really liking. <laughs> yeah. 
Is this what you meant when you asked me to share you that with this, this with you? Um, this is called Run. It's okay to run or not. I'm pretty sure it's translated. Um, so I don't know. It's okay to run or not. And it's got this little like board game in the front. No, written and illustrated by Nano, N-A-N-O. Um, and then uh, this is published by Nano. Um, but I just love like how funny is that painting? And just the like, um, it's a bunch of little like skateboarders. They're like really soft. It kind of reminds me of um, Charlotte May or Charlotte M-E-I. Um, May my um kind of reminds me of how uh she uses acrylic acrylic is hard for me sometimes but I'm getting into it it's just really beautiful I think it's on paper it's really soft a lot of like large shapes kind of a little bit 80s color palettes 80s 90s it's really cute um I like that a lot it's I've been thinking a lot about how I want to make a book, um, like a, it could just be like Esther Pearl Watson or, or um, Nano, where it's like just things I've already made um, in a book format. Um, so I've been looking up how to do that and you know what it would cost and trying to figure out what I would design it like and um, what the focus would be. Um, I just think it would be really satisfying to see everything like together, just even for myself. Um, and I love collecting those from other people um, as a way of kind of like holding on to their work. Because I think the thing that's really limiting is like, so in the project that I have my students do, they're like um, required to bring something to show of uh, this artist that they're excited about, right? Um, but a lot of times, like when you go to the library, the books that, um, our art books are people who are dead um and it doesn't always have to be like that like I just wonder like who gets to make art books and how are they made and um I love when people self-publish their own art books um I I can't get enough of them so I'm like well why don't I make one so that's uh those are some of my favorite things in, in about art non-art I'm trying to think um I've been really trying to be gentle with myself this summer um, teaching in the spring was really hard. Um, I also had just like a really rough 2021 and, um, I've been trying to ask myself, you know, some of the hard things that I've been going through, um, in 2021 are unavoidable and like grief oriented, but also like, you know, how can I make sure that I'm like caring for myself? Um, and what does that look like or mean for me? Um, and I think what I've realized is for me, um, caring for myself means like taking space to do the things that make me feel good. I really have a hard time resting. It's just something I'm not good at. Um, so I've been like having this ongoing conversation with myself. Like if we're not like sitting still, like what can we do that feels good? Um, swimming is one of those things. Um, I've been swimming a lot. Um, and meeting like a bunch of cool people doing that, which is so fun. Um, going outdoor, I'm going camping in a few weeks. Like, so, you know, I, I love going on hikes. I love being outside, love being in nature. I went to the Shins concert in Big Sur with my sister and my friend Erin. And that was like really wonderful. Um, so yeah, just trying to like ask myself if I can't sit still to rest, what is rest what does that look like? What feels rejuvenating and healing and good to my body and my brain? Um, and those seem to be it. So, um, yeah, those are things I'm loving and doing. Um, I guess that's all. Thanks for hanging out. I hope this was uh, a good reintroduction to, <laughs> to us spending time together here on YouTube. I know this is a lot of me talking at you, but maybe I just do that. I don't know.